We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are in Nangoto village, very close to Ebuya town in Bungoma County. Where we've been called to assist on a Shepap. So let's get on to it. And after traveling for a while admiring the beautiful landscape of Webuya County, we finally arrived at our destination where a shape-up was needed. We find Lillian and some members of her family eagerly waiting for us. Lillian and Alfred, you are very happy to be here. Are you happy? Yeah, welcome. Ah, good. Now, Lillian, tell me, why did you call us here? We called you here because mm. my mama is a farmer mm -hmm. and we wanted uh, this group of viewers to help her mm -hmm. uh, proceed with farming. Uh, how did you know about us? Uh, I saw your program called Shamba Shepherd on television mm -hmm. and also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you're a big fan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, what are you growing here? We grow crowned nuts, mm -hmm. sweet potatoes and maize. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been farming? For 10 years. 10 years? Do you enjoy it? Very much. Very much. Yeah. Lilia, do you do any farming? Yeah, I do. What are you growing? Personally, you yourself. I am personally, I like growing, planting maize. You got maize here? Yeah. So today we are also going to have maize? Yes. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Lillian explains to us that her mother is away on training and she wanted to surprise her with a shepherd before she returned. And I saw a little one here. Who is she? Oh, she's my firstborn. Ah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, Lillian, we are here. What have you prepared for us? Uh, I think chicken. Chicken. Yeah. You're talking about food. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I think all lawyers yes. prefer cooking nini chicken. And where are the chickens? They're around. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think you'll help me to catch one. So we have to catch a chicken yeah. so that we're able to eat. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> <sighs> Tony, <sighs> we need to do something about that. Well, 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 I think we need to sort that out. Can you imagine we were outrun by a chicken? So, we decided we have to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So, we called in an expert from Kenchik to help us. So Doc, here on Shamba Shepa, we've, we've constructed lots and lots of chicken houses and chicken sheds. But could you please remind us the basic points when one is constructing a chicken house? Yeah, it's good you mentioned a chicken house and different from a chicken shed. First thing is, eh, we talk about isolation. Make sure the place is secluded from unwanted visitors. Number two, about the spacing. A broiler needs one square foot per bird. So if you have like 200 broilers, you need like 200 square feet. House constructed in a way that fits all the birds inside. So uh, if you put a small space, the birds will not grow in a good way. Others will be small, others will be big. And they're also fighting for the drinking and feeding space. Mm -hmm. The third point is ventilation. There must be air moving from one side to one side. So if you have the three basic things, mm -hmm. you can really do good business in oh. the yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Doc. You've okay. armed us with the knowledge that we need. And I think right now we are ready to start constructing a chicken house. Aren't we, Naomi? Yep. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. And with the technical expert's advice, we started constructing the chicken house, remembering the basic points such as isolation, spacing, and proper ventilation. Now me now that we are sure of something to eat, a very nice meal, and the chicken shed is coming up, let's divide the work. Okay, so uh, I have to meet extras from Mayor. We're talking about fertilizer. Wow, wow. And there's lots to be done around the chamber. So I guess I'll see you later. Okay. Alfred grows leguminous crops such as groundnuts and beans and he needed to know more on how to make his crops better. 
So, our friends from Maya were on standby to help. Alfred, do you use any fertilizer while planting? Yeah. Which one? Maya. Oh, that's good, Alfred. Uh, which type of mare do you use? There are various mare fertilizers. Which 20, one do you use? 23, 23 what? 23, 23, zero. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good fertilizer yeah. for planting. Yeah. And today, I've also come with another one called Biofix and Simple. And this one is also used for planting and only planting leguminous crops. At the moment, you're planting groundnuts, right? Yeah. So today, we learn on how to plant groundnuts using this new fertilizer called Biofix and Simple. What exactly is Biofix? Biofix is a legume fertilizer, leguminous crops. When they are growing, they develop some growth on the, on the roots. They call them nodules. What Biofix does is that uh, it increases the number of those um, little growth on the roots. And now when they have more of those little growths, it assists that crop to make more nitrogen for itself so that it can sustain itself. Nitrogen helps in leaf development and plant growth. So when you use Biofix, you will not need to top dress with other nitrogen-based fertilizers like CN, urea, or that on your legume crops. How many packets can you use in planting an, in an acre? One that acre. Of Biofix? 100 grams of Biofix will plant 15 kilos of seed. Depending with your spacing, those 15 kilos of seed will plant one acre. Okay. Yeah. So could you show us how to fix it? Right away? Yeah. Okay, good. One packet of Biofix is enough for 15 kilograms of seed. Working in the shed, pour the seeds into a large container. Then, add the white powder to 300 milliliters of warm water and mix well. Add the water and powder mixture to the seeds and stir well. Then add the black powder, which is Biofix, to the seeds. Stir until all the seeds are coated with Biofix. Let the seeds dry in the shade. Then they are ready for planting. Remember when planting, make furrows or rows. Sprinkle fertilizer. Mix the fertilizer with soil. Then take the seed and place them on the furrow. Cover lightly with soil. Meanwhile, Rebecca has arrived from her training and is happily received by the family. I'm sure she'll be excited to meet us and see what you have been up to on her farm. And she starts right away by giving us some work to do. Rebecca, I'm trying to peel this ground. Am I doing it properly? Yeah, you know. I'll get used you know to it with to time. Peel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, you know. Right. Yeah. Now your daughter called us and told us to come here. Yes. And you've come and you're very happy. Finally, you are here. Yes. We went round with you. And you saw what you are working on? Yes. What do you think? I'm very happy because I've seen what you have done on my compound. Mm -hmm. The chamber there, you've planted some groundnuts for me. Mm -hmm. And behind me, there's a house for my chicken. A very good one. And I'm very happy. How are your groundnuts? They are good. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not bad. How much did you harvest last season? Last season, I harvested uh, three bags. And is that good? Uh, not that good. Not that good. How much were you expecting? I expected to get around uh, seven or eight bucks in an acre. Got only three bucks. Three bucks only? Yeah. Once you get like those three bucks, what do you do with them? I sell. How do you do your marketing? Okay, uh, after uh, preparing the groundnuts, mm -hmm. I go and look for mamas who sell groundnuts at the market. Rebecca is a member of Utawala Self Help Group whose main aim is to improve their lives through farming and marketing their farm products such as groundnuts. Shamba Shepa wanted to get the best advice for Rebecca and Alfred on growing their groundnuts so they could produce higher yield. We asked Sam, who is an expert on groundnuts, to pay them a visit. Most of us at one point must have come across a moldy groundnut. 
But how many of us know how mold grows and spreads in groundnuts? Sam, we've walked around with you in the chamber and I'm sure you have some observations. Which are the main ones? There is um, some weeds out here and uh, the, the plant spacing is um, not uh, correct. And uh, I can see some uh, plants that are a bit diseased. What should the spacing be? Um, ideally, spacing should be between 10 to 15 centimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, that's between one plant to the next. Mm -hmm. And between one row to the next should be about um, 60 to 65 centimeters. Okay. Now, farmers, yes. how did you do your spacing? Even we didn't use anything like measuring, we just planted. If you have planted your ground nuts, can you in the crop other cereals around? I mean, you can plant other, other cereals in the same land, but it's best to probably plant maybe a few rows of, of groundnuts, okay. and then the next few, few rows you, you plant your, your, your cereal, and then you, you plant your groundnuts the next few rows. Where did you get your seeds from? We just bought from the market. Is that good? Um, the seed source is very, very important mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. because um, if you go to the market and the seed is not certified, mm -hmm. then you don't really know where the source of the seed is. Mm -hmm. It could be recycled seed, it could be really old seed, mm -hmm. which affects vigor, and it could also be mixed varieties. Mm -hmm. So if you have mixed varieties, then that means that um, whenever you want to harvest, I mean, you don't really know uh, when the correct time to harvest is. Yeah. Some varieties may be mature in 90 days, mm -hmm. others in 120 days. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important um, to have uniform seed that is certified, that um, is going to be you know, vigorous and, and give you the correct yield. Uh, looking at uh, the pods, because we are fruited some, mm -hmm. what we can see is, you can see some insect damage. Yeah, it's not a disease, but this can be um, very serious in terms of what we'll be talking about, which is aflatoxin. Mm. What is aflatoxin? It's a toxic chemical that is produced by a fungus that is found in the soil. When the plant is growing and the plant is um, stressed by maybe moisture stress or even by um, foliar diseases, the plant becomes more susceptible to infection. So the fungus is able to infect through the pods and it produces this toxin that we call aflatoxin. So the fungus is present in, in most soils. Does it affect the groundnuts only or all, all, all these other cereals? Um, aflatoxin um, can be found in maize, it can be found in groundnuts, can be found in sorghum, can be found in um, even some millets. Does it affect the groundnuts when it's still in, in the shamba or how it is? Is it done? Contamination can occur before you harvest. A microscope allows us to magnify very small things. This is what the mold looks like through the microscope. But by looking at a groundnut plant, can a farmer be able to tell whether it has aflatoxin or not? By just by looking, how do you detect? Aflatoxin is, is something that is invisible. You cannot really be able to tell whether um, a nut is, mm -hmm. is, is contaminated or whether it's not contaminated. Mm -hmm. yes. By looking at the plant, you cannot really be able to tell. Mm -hmm. So w w um, the other ways that you can be able to, to use um, to be able to, to tell um, nuts that are um, of high risk, mm -hmm. that um, are, are probably shriveled, mm -hmm. those that, that, that are discolored, those that um, have some kind of insect damage, yes. and those that are broken. So the assumption here is that if, if, if it's broken or if it's damaged, then the fungus probably has had an opportunity to mm -hmm. infect. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that we usually put aside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can uh, be able to, to get some nuts mm -hmm. and, and open them up and you can see the, the mold or the fungus mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those ones definitely, I mean, you can be more than sure that they, they are probably contaminated mm -hmm. with aflatoxin. Mm -hmm. But the toxin itself, you cannot be able to see. It's colorless. It does not smell. Mm -hmm. But the fungus you can be able to see, and you can also see other things that would be able to tell you that there's a possibility mm. aflatoxin is, is present. What I can probably ask the farmers mm. is um, when can you tell the crop is ready for harvesting? When the leaves turn brownish, that's when we harvest. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, that's, um, that's, that's a good um, indication sometimes. Yes. But um, we realize that sometimes the leaves can probably um, turn color mm -hmm. based on disease and they can start falling off yeah. based on disease. So the best way of determining whether the plant 
is ready for harvesting mm -hmm. is when you split the pod open yes. and you look inside the pod mm -hmm. to see whether it's discolored. It usually starts turning brown mm -hmm. and, and, and blackish. Mm -hmm. and, and you see uh, how big the, the, mm -hmm. the seed the is seed inside yeah. the pod. That's how you determine. So you go into your field and you pick yes. a few plants, okay. you split them open and, and you look. Aflatoxin can cause cancer and can also result in stunt growth in children. It stops our bodies from fighting disease. So far we've covered how to apply biofix, groundnuts and aflatoxin, and the chicken house is almost done. And there's still lots to come, right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are still here in Nangoto village in Bungoma County. Where our experts continue to advise our farmers. There's lots and lots to be done. Let's get on with it. Finding market for most farm produce is very important. A good harvest can be lost without proper marketing strategy. Good timing and good storage is good for better prices at the market. Being a member of Farmers Group helps with better bargains and market. Rebecca is lucky she has a good market for her farm produce at the growing Webuye market. Rebecca also grows traditional vegetables. She knows what's good for her family health, but she could do with some technical advice as she gets top tips from an expert. Nasambu, you've looked around uh, Re uh, Rebecca's farm, yeah? You looked at the vegetables. What do you think? I have walked around your farm. I have seen your progressive farmer and you have been planting African indigenous vegetables. But you have not been managing very well. And if you want your child to grow and be strong, then you have to start feeding her and encouraging her to eat African indigenous vegetables. And again, when you want to make quick money as a youthful farmer and also to assist your mother, then you have got to grow African indigenous vegetables. It minimum should be a quarter an acre. So how does the farmer get the seeds? Yes, the farmer now is able to get easily good quality seeds from curry, from Simlo seeds, and even from some universities. So how do you plant them? It's very easy to plant African indigenous vegetables, especially amarandas. All you do is prepare your land and remove all weeds and bring it to a fine tilt. And once you've done that and removed all the big clothes, then be able to bring good quality farmyard manure. What do we mean by good quality farmyard manure? You ensure that the manure is well rotten and you mix thoroughly with the soil. Uh -huh. Having done that, then you use a measuring tape and from row to row it should be 30 centimeters or one foot. Then you make furrows that are very shallow, less than five centimeters. Just use a sharp pointed stick and then once you've done that, add also the planting fertilizer. You can also use mavumo and you use approximately 10 grams per one meter length. Then you mix the seeds with building sand. It has to be clean building sand. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we are mixing the seeds with the building sand is to help to spread the seeds evenly in the farm. In case there is some drought during the season, then you need to do some supplementary irrigation. Mm -hmm. And to be able to achieve your objective of having a higher yield, then you need to mulch your plot. You use a dry grass, you spread it all along the rows, thinly, not heavy, thinly, immediately after planting. Now that the chicken shed is ready, I think we should call Dr. John to bring in the chicks. And in the meantime, I'll take care of the feeds. Mr. Kimboy, yes, there you are. How are you? Fine, thank you. Let's get this feed out. Look fast. Not so fast, Tony. Yeah. Where are the farmers? We need to discuss a few things first. Oh, the farmers are here. Here they are. Hello, Mr. Kimboy. Hello. Happy Welcome to see you. Oh, good to see good you. Yeah. Now let's go to the feeds. Do we feed the chicks with all these, or how do we do it? Okay, I brought different types of feed here. Uh, broiler feeds are come in two types: fast growth starter mash mm -hmm. or fast growth starter crumbs, which will be fed from day one to week three. That is day one to week three. Yeah. 
Then the second part of the feed is first row finisher, mash or finisher pellets, mm -hmm. which will be fed from the third week until you slaughter your chicken. Maybe when uh, you want to feed the chicken, is there something you measure with or you just pour there? What you need from the chicken is meat. Yeah. So what you need to do is feed them free of choice mm -hmm. from day one until you slaughter so that they can gain weight, weight faster. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to, to measure any feed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you so much, Mr. Kimboy. To stay protected when using chemicals, you must wear a dust coat and gum boots. The whole chicken shed must have a light spray with disinfectant. And also, not forgetting a disinfectant food bath at the entrance. The chicken house is ready. The chicks are in. The expert is at hand with top tips. Rebecca can't wait to practice what she has learned. So Alfred and Rebecca, the chicks are finally here. Yeah? Yes. Are you happy? Very, Very happy. happy. <laughs> so now what advice do you have for them? So the first thing, look at the jiko, yes. the source of heat. Yeah. This is what will make them survive for the next three weeks. Yes. This place is called the brooding space. Yeah. They have the drinkers, mm -hmm. this source of water, yeah. and the, the water inside has been put some multivitamin. Yes some glucose and liquid paraffin mm -hmm. to help them survive the first few days. The re re ready energy for them to survive. Mm -hmm. We have the feeders mm -hmm. that are there for them to small, small, small feeds. Look at even the color of the feeders. Mm -hmm. They are red. Yes. The color of the drinkers uh -huh. is red because the red color attracts the, the chicks. Mm -hmm. They also, the newspaper, mm -hmm. put some feeds on the newspaper. Mm -hmm. This helps them to know at least what is feed. Mm -hmm. They start consuming as immediate as possible. When the chicks come, feeds are on the other side, water is on the other side. Yes. They'll survive for a period of three weeks, then we'll expand in this particular house. Yes. But the most important thing in this poultry farming is, eh, is disease management. Yes. There's a water at the door mm -hmm. that you must step in for you to get inside this poultry house. The most important thing again is the vaccination program. So the first vaccination we'll do it after seven days. Seven days, you'll do the vaccine called Gumbora. Mm -hmm. Then after that, ten days, you do uh, one called Newcastle. You mm -hmm. can go to any agrovet, you can get the instructions how to use it. Yes. But most importantly is, Gumbora is given the first, on the seventh yes. day. Mm -hmm. So, and how do they administer the, the vaccine? There are ways of administering the vaccine. One is through drink, drinking water, mm -hmm. one is through the eye drop. Now, in drinking water, mostly we give uh, Gumboro, mm -hmm. even Newcastle, you can give on drinking water. Yes. You can use rain water, mm -hmm. or you can use uh, the normal water, which is the tap water we are using. Mm -hmm. You boil it overnight, mm -hmm. and you cool. Yes. And make sure the water you give them, they are able to drink in less than two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what we should do first, give them the feeds for some time, yes. two hours without water, water mm -hmm. so they become thirsty. Mm -hmm. Then if you use the water, you're able to drink it fast. Now for uh, uh, putting the birds on uh, eye drop, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. this is the bird. Yes. Uh, the bird will not, that, will not know that we are putting a drop. Mm -hmm. I usually supply with a dropper. Mm -hmm. Don't use a syringe. Yeah. There's a dropper sp specified for using okay. for that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just put one drop. Mm -hmm. It's just enough. Mm -hmm. Put one drop, put them in a place. Mm -hmm. A drop, you separate. Mm -hmm. A drop, you separate. Mm -hmm. I think that and the day you can able to do it very very fast. So, are you ready now to take over? Yeah. I'm more than ready. <laughs> you're more than ready. I'm more than ready. Yeah. And you're ready to help her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it has been a very very good shape up. So everybody's happy. Yeah. Very happy. Oh, one last thing. Ingo ho. Well, it's been another great show right here from Bugoma County. We've had so much fun. We've learned so much. Aha. And we hope to see you next time right here on Shamba Shepherd.